guys, by the time this video airs, we will already be in Anglis as we get ready to go back to Canada. But today I want to talk to you about my story on how we ended up living our two worlds, half in Canada and half here. Hence Canuck summers and Pinoy winters. But what's my story on how I ended up living in the Philippines? Yep, when it's six months, it's not a vacation. <laughs> Let's dive into it. The not so short story. <laughs> okay guys, so Lynn and I had met and I had made a few trips here um, and you know enjoyed it, but it was tourism in the head, right? That was all tourism based. Get to know the Philippines a little bit, but you know when you're getting it from a hotel restaurant um, you know beach type of environment with pools and stuff that's not really reality right um, I don't think we even took in a movie those first oh no I did I did I did I did Lynn had to go back to work on the very first trip uh, the last two days um, so you know our story is probably not the same as everybody else's story um, but maybe listening to my story might help you and your decision if you're going to uh, relocate full-time or part-time to another country, not necessarily the Philippines. So in our particular case, uh, we did a lot of travel in those early days. I mean, we had, as I mentioned in the other video, we had the issue with Lynn trying to get out of the country uh, on the second trip. On the first trip, I just went right up to immigration with her and there was no problem. A uh, little bit of meh, meh, but I went up with her. Car seat tried to say I'm not supposed to be there and I just pretended like I didn't understand and we got through there. Uh, Lynn's a pretty tough knuckle when it comes to this stuff. Um, I'll give you the story of the DFA here shortly. Um, then we, we decided to go off to Singapore and Malaysia, Thailand, uh, did a short little cruise. And again, you know, it's holiday based, right? Um, no, sorry, that, now we're off to Bangkok. Sorry, the, the Singapore was the first trip out of the country. The second one was Bangkok and all I was doing is transiting through. This time they did take her out of the line. And again, if the Filipina doesn't have a house and doesn't have, you know, sizable income in a bank or whatever, they just don't let them go. They get worried that they're going to have to pay to re-immigrate uh, the, uh, the Filipino. So anyway, I, she texted me and said she was out of the line. And I said, look, I'm going to clear immigration and I will be there shortly. And I knew there would be an, a bit of an issue there, but you just say, my wife is on the other side <laughs> because for all intents and purposes, guys, if it was a Western country, marriage certificate or not, you're considered married. Um, we had a number of trips after that, guys. And then in that process of travel, etc., I decided to pull the trigger and retire. Now, I'd always had it in my head that I was going to retire at 55. And so I had saved a fair amount of money and, you know, put things aside to 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 maybe make that goal and so it was achievable and and there we go um so i've been retired without pension from the government ever since shortly i will next year or so i will be able to get or apply for my pension but there's no sense in canada and taking your pension early because it is a monstrous drop between the age of 55 and 65 so no i was not going to take it at 55. Um, then came the life in Angeles. Some great times, met some great people, and at the end of it all, this, this one bozo, hey John, <laughs> John and I will tell you to each other's face and to you too, there's no way we would have been friends in our native country. But we knew enough to put certain things aside, and Man, oh man, it's turned into a wonderful relationship. Uh, we have a lot of good times together, even if it's just sitting on the couch eating all of his candy. <laughs> he has a candy box, we call it the 7-Eleven. Uh, 
but you know in all of that too was all of this back and forth to immigration and back and forth and back and forth and then i fly to canada they want to do an interview but they don't want to do it with her like doesn't make sense anyway i don't mind telling you this this lady straight out of university or whatever walks through the room and her first couple of questions i knew she was going to deny us because her first question is why aren't you married and of course me being older and all that stuff i just said in canada you don't have to be married to have a relationship and then she said but but you keep flying back here and i said yeah you know as shown in my papers there my son's wedding my granddaughter's birth you expect me not to come back? Uh, yeah, was basically her answer. And it was like, are you kidding me? Anyway, so I knew almost instantly in that meeting that Lynn was going to be denied. So then we had to go through the whole process of reapplying and everything. And we kind of got wind later that immigration was going through a lot of you know, major changes in how they were dealing with uh, permanent residencies and, and you know, job placement and all that sort of thing for foreigners. So... You know, in retrospect, uh, you know, we kind of know why it took two and a half years. So suffice to say is after all of that and dealing with nothing but government and that, 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 that was it still, it wasn't tourism, but it wasn't really the Philippines, was it? And so, you know, my whole objective, I go back home, I'm going to work and, and, you know, all that sort of thing. And we're never going back to the Philippines again. Well, it was barely even 18 months later and we're flying back here. <laughs> because you know what caught me? Pace of life. Pace of life in a Western country is insane. It's insane, guys. You know, you look at how many people work in a restaurant in the Philippines and then you look at how many people work in a restaurant in, in Western countries. They're working their asses off. Of course, they're making good coin. Hopefully. Hopefully. You know. Anyway, there was no way I was going back to work. And the net result is Lynn gets her, her visa. Another hoop, guys. And so she has to get clearance from the government to leave her country. You know, next time you think about belly aching about stuff that goes on in your country, you know, you got a lot more freedom than you might realize. You know, probably close to 75% of the world does not have freedoms like we do. Not at all. Not at all. And I know a lot of people will cite the freedoms that the Filipino people have. <laughs> There's also some anarchy here. <laughs> all I have to do is tell you about the organized chaos called driving. <laughs> anyway, on Lynn's exit interview, uh, the guy's talking about to her about uh, their worry about... Um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, hijacking people. What do they call that? Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and, and she barks at him and says, are you kidding me? That stuff is happening in our own country, in our own country. We've got friends that work in the bars as, as waitresses. Are you kidding me? She went off on the guy. <laughs> so now you know a little bit more about Lynn too. Um, you know, as, ma as much as she might be meek at times, human trafficking, that's the word, um, as much as she might be, uh, you know, quiet and, and that sort of thing at times, no, no, there's times there, boy, she doesn't put up with it. Other times I say, where's the Lynn that put up with, fired back at DFA and immigration and stuff uh, when it comes to <laughs> whatever else we were dealing with with the house, let's say. Wow. Anyway. My story is probably not the same as a lot of yours out there. Um, of course, the U.S. immigration is different. Uh, they don't want you married when you go to the U.S. They want you to get married in the, in the U.S. Um, Canada is kind of the other way around. It was pretty clear that conjugal or not, they didn't care. They really wanted me married, period. Um, and the net result is we had a, a wedding on the beach. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, in all of these stories and, and you listen to other guys give their stories on vlogs and, and people interview other guys, how did you get here? The stories are endless, guys. I think it's about how you set yourself up. 
when you come to the Philippines or any other place for that matter. It's how you set yourself up that's key and getting ready for the culture shock. And, you know, I know a lot of you might be ex-military as an example, so you've been to some pretty horrible areas, but you still have to go through the culture shock every time. Um, you know, as military, you're working, you know, and you might have a lot of free time and stuff, but at the end of the day, uh, you're still not retired. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a completely different ball game. I never thought I could slow myself down as an engineer, um, but boy, oh boy, once I discovered pace of life in a Western country and what it was doing to me, you know, no way. Anyway, so now we go back and forth, and this old carcass is loving it. But please, guys, spend some time, you know, uh, explore, uh, ground yourself for a little while, even if you take a whole year. You know, it doesn't matter, but don't, my caution is don't sell everything lock, stock and barrel back in your native country until you've experienced it. Last thing, you know, the, the, the interesting thing is when we sold in Vancouver and we moved to a smaller town, we knew we could never go back again because we bought ourselves out of that market. There was no way we could move back into that market. And so, you know, it's very similar in many ways. Uh, I'll cite John and Diane again off of Paul Old Dog New Tricks. He buried himself in that first year and, uh, you know, got himself back to the States. He's digging himself back out now, but he's had to leave his wife and kids back here. Aiza Biga? <laughs> you know, but all of us have stories. All of us have things that, you know, beat us up in life. And, and uh, you know, the more we can try and, project what we're going to need in the future uh, will really help us in the long term. So do a little planning and this old carcass says have fun. Later Gators!